Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Now last week I made a video on the players that had affected the economy the most over RuneScape's history, however there are a few big players that I left out. So today I'm going to be having a look at another set of players that have had a massive effect on the RuneScape economy. Now these are generally very influential players, uh, some of them are going to be YouTubers or streamers, or a very successful or popular mercher. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Before we get started, I would really appreciate it if you went ahead and subscribed to my channel. And if you haven't done it already, hit the bell icon so you'll be getting notifications whenever I upload. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Now the first story I want to talk about here is none other than the Great Monkey Nut Explosion of 2017. Now back in mid-2017, something really interesting happened. Now the junk item Monkey Nuts went from around 200 each all the way up to 10,000 each at its peak, which is an absolutely massive increase. It increased over 50 times in value. For example, that's like something going from 100k up to 5 mil. Now this was all caused by a single person, and that was a YouTuber named Critical. Now sometime in 2017, Critical started playing old school RuneScape again, and this is pretty noteworthy because, uh, I mean, when you compare how influential a YouTuber like Critical is to even the most popular RuneScape YouTuber, it's not even a comparison. If you look at the amount of views Critical's channel gets every month, it's like 20 or 30 times more than the highest viewed RuneScape YouTuber, which is pretty noteworthy because generally really popular YouTubers don't play RuneScape. And it's a pretty niche game among some diehard fans. Yes, we have a lot of new players. Yes, the game is growing but it's not very common for someone with such influence to play this game. And that is what makes this so interesting. Like for example, if I did something like this, yeah, I'd probably have a pretty tangible effect on the economy, but not to this extent. And now in 2017, Critical started collecting junk items and somewhere along the way, someone donated him uh, some monkey nuts. Now this pretty much became a giant meme and after a while, everyone started donating Critical stacks of monkey nuts. Now what essentially happened is the price went from around 100, 200 each all the way up to 10,000 each on the GE at its peak. Now there is a pretty big bottleneck on monkey nuts because there's only one way to get them and that's buying them from the Apatol store for 3 GP each. Now there's only one use to this item and that is part of a recipe to protect spirit trees. Pretty damn weird. So there was a pretty serious bottleneck on the amount of items that could be actually bought from the shop, so then everyone turned to the GE to try to supply the giant demand that was the monkey nut craze. Everyone was trying to buy the items from the GE to give to Critical, which drove up the price immediately. I believe it got so bad that Jagex actually had to manually correct the price on the Grand Exchange, as normally the price can only increase 5% a day. Now what I find really funny is even to this day, there's now a money making method on the Grand Exchange and currently it's still about 700k per hour. Now Old School RuneScape was released February 22nd of 2013. Tens of thousands of players logged on that day to start leveling up their account and pretty much right after the release, people were racing to get to the highest levels possible. Now in general, that was just for rank, but in a couple of circumstances, it was not just for rank. You could make a ton of money by being one of the first players to reach a certain goal. And what is one of the most sought after items in the entire game? Well, the Abyssal Whip. Now, unlike when RuneScape Classic was released in old school RuneScape, Slayer was in the game from day one. Now, there were a ton of players that were racing to get 85 Slayer, but it's generally agreed upon that the player James was the first person to actually get it. However, it appears that he was not actually the first person to get an Abyssal Whip. It appears that a player by the name of 2192 was the first person to actually obtain a Whip by using a Wild Pie. With a Wild Pie, you could theoretically get an Abyssal Whip as low a level as 80 Slayer, which would significantly cut out a lot of time from that grind. Now, like I said, OSRS was released February 22nd, and it appears that the very first Whip uh, was achieved March 9th or somewhere around that time, which means it only took about two or three weeks for the first person to get to 85 Slayer. Now, Abyssal Whips were going for a much higher price at their release because there were so few of them in the game. The first couple of whips were selling somewhere between 8 to 10 mil, and we got to keep something in mind here 8 to 10 mil, two weeks after the release of RuneScape, is a massive amount of money because there really just wasn't that much cash in the game at that point. And with inflation, that could be worth 10, 20, 30, 100 times more. It's hard to say exactly for sure, but what we can say is that the first Abyssal Whips were going for an insane amount of money, and the first players, whether it be James or 2192, made a ridiculous amount of money by selling Abyssal Whips. 
Okay, so next up here, I'm gonna talk about one of the richest players of all time, and that is MD3W. Now, they are widely considered to be one of the richest, if not the richest player around the end of 2013. Now, this player was primarily a merchant, and they were pretty well known for having a pretty significant influence on the super rare market at that time. For example, party hats, Christmas crackers, stuff like that. Back in 2011, this player only had 3 billion GP, but managed to increase their wealth all the way to 200 bill by 2013, purely by merchantine party hats and Christmas crackers. Now, there aren't that many players who would have the wealth to actually merchant the way MD3W did, and that was by using some very similar tactics to Wilson in Old School RuneScape. Now, similar to the Third Age Longsword and OSRS, Christmas crackers and party hats were generally sold above max cash, which means all of the trades had to be done outside of the GE, else you lose a ton of money. So when that is the case, the actual price of party hats is really influenced by who actually has them and what they want to charge. The best merch that MD3W ever did was buying 20 Christmas crackers at 3.3 bill and selling them for an average of 6.5 bill, which there is a 60 billion GP profit, probably one of the biggest flips of all time. That is a ridiculous amount of money, it's kind of hard to comprehend how much profit that is for a single flip. Now when you have such a big influence over the market, you can take advantage of in-game events. For example, at one point, rares were crashing, and MD3W managed to pick up Christmas crackers in the GE, which means he didn't pay more than 2.1 bill for them. Now MD3W primarily played in RuneScape 3, however they did dabble in old school RuneScape as well, but never seemed to have as much success. Now when we have a look at the richest players in RuneScape history, almost always they are a merchant, because when you become one of the richest 1% in the game, you can afford to have a stranglehold on the market, and because of that you can make just so much more money. For example, if someone just wanted to try to flip a party hat back then, they probably wouldn't have had as much success because they didn't have as much influence, knowledge of the market, and capital to make it work. Not to mention you might just be bought out by someone like MD3W and have your item resold at a higher price. And finally here we have another one of the most influential players of all time, and that is Chessy018. Now Chessy018 is once again well known for being an extremely rich player back from RS2. Once again, she is a very well-known merger and had already achieved a pretty respectable uh, cash stack before the Grand Exchange came out. But once the GE was released, she started a merchanting clan, and this really just goes to show how much money you can make by influencing the economy this way. Now, she ran her own merchanting clan. Now, I did make a video on merchanting clans a couple of weeks ago, so I'm not going to go in-depth too much into it, but essentially she was running a pump-and-dump scheme where she'd have a bunch of clan members buy out an item, artificially increase the price, and then dump the items later for a massive profit. Kind of profiteering, not really that ethical, illegal in a lot of countries, but anyway that's not the point. Through doing this repeatedly, Chessy managed to make an absolutely insane amount of money, as she was known for having massive stacks of rare items. One of her most famous collections is 1,000 Santa hats, uh, which at the current value of Santa hats would be worth nearly a trillion GP, which is ridiculous. Now, whether she still has those, I've sold them long ago, who knows. But at one point, she had three to four party hat sets, 300 to 400 bandos, chest plates, tacits, boots, and six piles of max cash. Now, the way Chessie made money was not unique. Now, did Chessie make the most amount of money ever from Merchantine Clans? We don't know, but she was the one who was more public about her wealth. So we don't really know about the other ones, but we do know she made absolute bank. Now, because of how rich she was, she did eventually get hacked. Uh, March of 2011, and it got away with most of her valuable items. At the time, it was believed that 170 bill was hacked off of her account, uh, which is a bit of a letdown. <laughs> Unfortunately, the money was never given back, and she supposedly quit right after. Uh, so to summarize over these two videos here, the types of players that have influenced the economy the most have either been content creators, very influential merchants, or players who manage to have a unique skill set by being the only player with a certain level. For example, killing abyssal demons, or crafting rune two-handers. It's pretty easy to charge whatever you want if you're the only one who can do it. Anyway guys, that is going to be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy the video, I always appreciate it if you leave it a like. Always helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.